When Ray Tan asked me if I wanted to review their new budget brand Wo Wee, I said, We? Oui. That's a French joke. Yes, it's that time again where we scrape the bottom of the barrel for the last remaining names that haven't yet been trademarked. Or something. I don't know. Do I look like I work for the marketing department of these mini PC brands? Pfft, no. There's a much bigger channel for that. As usual, we're going to go in depth with the Wowee P5 and reveal the good, the bad, and the ugly. Sorry, sorry, I forgot to put some pants on. Wowee's P5 is a special kind of mini PC. No, not that kind of special. Different, like this review. So what if I told you a mobile CPU from days past that by all measures should no longer exist is brought back into mini PC form, sold at a dirt cheap price, and still offers better performance than Intel's latest end budget line. So may I present to you the mini PC featuring AMD's Ryzen 5 3500U. Four cores, eight threads with Radeon Vega graphics. This CPU first released in 2019 and is almost as old as this channel. Has it really been that long already? Oh God. The Wowee P5 mini PC comes with a wall power supply, VESA mount, and manual. What else could you possibly need? Apart from a desk, Keyboard, mouse, mouse mat, monitor, power socket, internet connection. The front of this mini features dual USB 3 5 gigabit ports along with a USB C 10 gigabit. While it doesn't support power delivery, it does support display out. There's also a 3.5mm audio jack. On the left side is a micro SD card reader, while inside there's a Realtek 8821C for Wi Fi and Bluetooth. The back has a Realtek gigabit LAN jack, USB 3 5 gigabit. USB 2 and dual HDMI 2.0. So, a maximum of three displays at 4K 60Hz. And on top of it is the uh, unfortunate looking logo. <coughs> what surprised me more than the existence of this CPU in 2025 is the price tag. 140 US dollars on the official website with free shipping in the US for the 256 GB SSD, 8 GB RAM model. So no 145% tariff just yet? Is that right? Is it up or down today? Aussies on the other hand have nothing to be happy about as shipping for this to the land down under is 100 US dollars. Oh, do we also have a tariff? Is that still too much? I understand, times are tough. You'll be happy to hear it's on amazon.com for even less. So with this price point and specs, we can laugh together at Intel's Alder Lake N CPU lineup and rush out to buy one, right? If only things were that simple. That's why they keep me out of the marketing department. If I just said every mini was amazing, my life would be so much easier. The Wowee P5 is open by removing four outer screws and pulling the rubber. Or not. It wouldn't budge. I had to pry the sucker open to get the bottom off. There's a 2.5 inch SATA connector for mounting an extra storage drive to the bottom lid. Only one stick of RAM, aka single channel memory is included. It's DDR4-3200, but AMD's Ryzen 3500U maxes out at 2400. We'll see how much performance is lost over using two sticks. Underneath the NVMe drive is the M.2 wireless card. This is the first mini we've looked at in many years to include Windows 10 Home. Yet it is Windows 11 compatible and can be upgraded for free through Windows Update. So being the time poor person I am, I was hoping to only benchmark it with one OS. But after putting up a poll and reading the comments, I realize I'm going to have to do both to find out the answer to this question that's been plaguing man since the dawn of time. Which OS performs better? And the answer is Linux. But seriously, Ubuntu works fine on this mini if you want to use it instead. Alrighty then, starting with single core Cinebench, and there's nothing impressive here. The 3500U performs just like Intel's Alder Lake N. Windows 11 won this round by a tiny 1% margin. Multicore is a different story. The 4 cores and 8 threads match Intel's 8 core i3 N300 in multicore, while the N305 is still substantially ahead. Windows 10 results were better, but it's a tiny improvement. Okay, with a single stick of DDR4 memory, the 3500U does poorly in the Geekbench single core test, which, unlike Cinebench, is affected by memory bandwidth. After adding a second stick, there's a small jump in score, but it's still behind, well, almost everything on the list. Multicore was unimpressive as well until I added the second RAM stick. Windows 10 won out slightly once again. 
Video encoding with a CPU is a little better than the i3 N300, but if we add a second RAM stick, we're closer to the N305 and far better than the other older Lake N CPUs. This time Windows 10 and 11 had almost identical results. Next, I offloaded the same video file to the iGPU, and AMD's VCE encoder is not as good as Intel's QSV, with the N97 beating it even when the 3500U has dual channel memory. Windows 10 won out here by just over a couple percent margin. 3D Mark's Firestrike DX11 result doesn't look crazy from the outset, with a 3500U being similar to an N305, but if you give it more bandwidth with a second stick, watch that bar grow. Taking the best N97 and 3500U result, that's a huge 62% increase for the 3500U and messes up the scaling of my graph. Thanks AMD. Windows 10 did a bit better in all the GPU tests, but nothing major. In DX12 TimeSpy, it's a massive 85% uplift when comparing the best results, and Steel Nomad would only run with dual channel memory as the Mini didn't allocate enough RAM with one stick. This time, it's a ginormous 132% increase over the N97. So, from these benchmarks, we can say the 3500U has around the same single core CPU performance, better multi core, and much better iGPU than the N97, but you need to add another RAM module inside it, which not everyone is willing to do. So, it would have been great if a 16GB RAM config in dual channel was available for order as well. Now that we've seen the benchmarks, let's see how they hold up when we pit Intel's N97 in gaming, which is closer in price than the N300 series. I've also included the single and dual channel captures as I went full nutjob for this review and threw all notions of sticking to a deadline out the window. Interestingly, with Valorant, the 3500U performs like the N97 with single channel memory. Add another stick though, and the average shoots up 25 frames, or 33%. Interestingly, all of them are doing poorly on the 1% lows. Dota 2 is the closest we'll see between the three captures. None of these are great, but the 3500U is slightly ahead. Counter-Strike 2 clearly separates each test. The N97 does terribly, while the single channel result for the 3500U is still below 30 FPS. Adding another stick of RAM makes all the difference with almost a 40 frames per second average. Hades 2 is another case where the N97 matches the 3500U when it's single channel memory. The average N1% low shoots up with a second stick. A 101 FPS average is an increase of 77%. Interestingly, first game that the Intel N97 has a win with is GDA5 Enhanced Edition. Well, only when the 3500U is held back by memory bandwidth. That being said, even when it isn't, the frame rate still falls below 30 FPS using the minimum settings preset. Moving on to emulation. The Intel N97 and 3500U using single channel memory can't run Tekken Tag Tournament full speed at 1080p. But a second stick gets you up to 60 FPS with the odd frame drop. Nintendo Wii emulation shows an almost identical scenario. Testing all the games in both Windows 10 and 11 wasn't feasible, but I did one game test out of curiosity. 80s 2 shows Windows 10 with a higher 1% low. The average frame rate is very similar. Overall the benchmarks showed Windows 10 to be ever so slightly faster, but it isn't anywhere near as big a deal as a memory bandwidth situation. Okay, I wanted to quickly point out something with a 3500U. The graphics driver is no longer being updated by AMD, and hasn't been updated since the end of 2023. It's very annoying to see two new driver listings which are not compatible and simply come back with unsupported hardware when you try and run them. On the other hand, Intel's older Lake N graphics drivers are still getting updated. One example is GTA 5 Enhanced Edition complaining about an outdated driver, but it still worked fine when I tried to run it anyway. It's something to be aware of and a downside of older CPUs. Moving on to the audio and video tests. Wowie's P5 passed the audio latency test no problem with Cinebench running in the background. Next, we're checking out Adobe Premiere. The usual 7 minute 1080p project isn't great out of the box. There's some noticeable lag scrubbing across the timeline, 
and does much worse than the Intel N97. But the extra RAM stick helps close the gap and makes it feel like a similar experience. However, I'd still give the win to the N97 for snappiness. I often harp on about Intel's superior video hardware decoding. It's Alder Lake N's best feature and happy to show the difference here. This AV1 4K 60fps YouTube video plays back great on Intel's N97, while it's unwatchable on the 3500U. Oh, and did I mention this is with dual channel memory? Yeah, it's that bad. Frames dropping isn't just limited to AV1, VP9 also drops frames at the same resolution and frame rate, but is much better. The included SSD with the WoWe P5 runs at Gen 3 X4 speed, which is rare on Intel's Alder Lake N platform with the lack of PCIe lanes. And here, the WoWe P5 managed to take the top spot in the varied SSD benchmark. When opening up the Mini, we saw there was no cooling at all for the SSD, and it really shows in the temperature result as it shot up above 100C on the controller when thrashed non-stop. At this temp, it started thermal throttling. A heatsink on the drive would do wonders, but you're height limited if also adding a 2.5 inch SATA drive. Bluetooth range is impressive with the WoWe P5. It's around the minis with external antennas. And the Wi-Fi range at 12 meters or 39 feet with a 5G band was good as well. This mini isn't great for idle power draw, chugging 11 watts overall, and the maximum shows where a lot of the performance is coming from. The WoWe P5 chugs up to 57 watts from the wall, with Intel's most power-hungry Alder Lake N chips only hitting 44 watts. And the N97 we compared it against was only 36. Since we're plugged into the wall and not running on a battery like a laptop, this isn't a problem, but it does affect cooling as there's more heat to deal with. However, when it comes to maximum CPU temp, the WoWe P5 held up pretty well with the CPU managing to stay under 90C across all the testing. There's still something else that is affected by the power draw, and that's fan noise. Unfortunately, this is not a quiet mini PC. This is usually the noise level for high-end minis with double the power draw. On top of that, the fan pitch is high, which makes it more noticeable. There is a quiet mode in the BIOS, which drops fan noise to 32 dBA. The scope of this review video is already far beyond the usual budget mini PC review, but I did some quick tests. Quiet mode lowers the power limit, with Cinebench multi-core falling to 4-core Intel Alder Lake N levels, which no longer makes it impressive, while the 3D Mark Steel Nomad GPU test using dual-channel memory fell by 29%. At least that's still much better than Intel's N97. Here's how Quiet Mode holds up against Balanced in Hades 2. That's a 28% drop in frame rate. 3D Mark is on the money. Anyway, here's the pitch and differences in fan noise. In advance, the most useful functions are at the top. Auto power on, wake on land, and power limit. Want to change the fan curve? You can't. Want to specify the VRAM? You can't. And that's it for the BIOS. Okay, I've run out of jokes and steam after all the testing, so here are my pros and cons. The big one is the price. Even though it's an 8GB RAM, 256GB SSD combo for what you get, the Huawei P5 is hard to beat in ultra-budget value. Wireless and Bluetooth range is great. There are three storage options, M.2 NVMe, 2.5-inch SATA, and the microSD card slot. However, single-channel memory tanks performance, especially on the iGPU side. You really need to add a second stick to unleash the budget beast, and those not tech-savvy might not be willing to do so. The NVMe storage drive runs hot. Official AMD GPU driver support is dead since late 2023. Load fan noise at default is high. I found the WoWe P5 to be an incredibly interesting budget mini PC, which is why I spent so much time with it. To make it a no-brainer purchase, I would have liked to see a dual-channel 16GB RAM option, a heatsink on the SSD, and a quieter cooling solution on the CPU to bring the fan noise down. Supporting USB-C power delivery would also be the icing on the cake. But after all that, it definitely wouldn't be 139 US dollars. As it is, the P5 is still a very compelling budget option and it won't cost you much extra to throw in an 8GB DDR4 stick and a heatsink on the SSD 
if you're keen to do so. That way, it'll kick Intel's minis in the nuts for most tasks, in part thanks to its higher power limit advantage. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on Woey's P5. Is it a Wii for you? That's a French joke. Oh, and if you haven't seen it already, I recently reviewed Raytan Silver 9, a much more powerful Intel mini PC that you can check out right here. Cheers.